talking 2006's Stay Alive. No, sorry, we're not talking about a John Travolta movie here. 2006's Stay Alive is directed and co-written by William Brent Bell, who has gone on to direct movies like The Boy and The Devil Inside. And this was actually produced by a subsidiary of Disney, so technically speaking it's a Disney horror film. And it's a kind of a, a horror movie which is about the world of video gaming. Now, 2006, I was actually working in the video game industry, and I remember when this movie came out. This was actually produced to be a somewhat of a uh, kid-friendly horror film, if you know what I mean. It was cut down from its original kind of um, underrated version to so it could fit the American PG-13 uh, rating although there is a director's cut which is unrated which has 15 minutes of extra kind of like more adult orientated footage in it but we are talking about the the standard theatrical cut here because that's probably the one that most people have seen so as i said this takes the uh, the world of of, of of gaming a gaming horror movie a possessed video game if you will and it's kind of like um what hackers did for the kind of uh, the real life hackers it's kind of that glossy hollywood uh, version of uh, what the reality actually was at that kind of period of time it very much feels like a 90s sort of scream style slasher movie with the kind of the cast of uh, you know good looking um individuals we've got the goth girl who's we know she's goth because the movie tells us she's goth and she's got black hair and her name's october that's convenient isn't it anyway what is the story so it focuses on a group of friends who get this beta test game of a uh, of someone else with this guy, one of the guys knew, who has died of mysterious circumstances. So they end up playing this kind of this game, thinking it's some kind of preview of an upcoming game, and it's this horror game. Now, survival horror games are, you know, popular still, and they were at the kind of the time with the likes of, uh, you know, Resident Evil, Alone in the Dark, and this movie actually name drops a couple of them. And uh, once you kind of play this game, you have to kind of read this uh, text and ultimately it kind of serves as a kind of a spirit board summoning Elizabeth Bathory. And uh, yeah, you're basically fated to die unless you can uh, win the challenge ultimately. So this, this group of, uh, of uh, teenagers played by probably 30 year olds have to go out and uh, try and uh, uncover what they have to do to escape their untimely demise. What will happen? You have to watch the movie and find out. So let us discuss. This movie gets a lot of stick, um, to be honest. Partly because of its uh, silly premise, partly because of its kind of toothless PG-13 um, rating, and just because obviously the gaming where we were at that period of time was nowhere kind of near uh, like you really see here on kind of home consoles and things like this. So. Um, what can I say that works? I didn't mind this movie as much as some people. I still think it's got a fairly kind of decent idea. Um, you know, we've seen video game movies, everything from Last Starfighter in science fiction to various kind of like, you know, family adventures. So it makes sense that we have uh, horror games that are not just based on video game properties, but actually based on the video game culture. So I actually kind of quite like the idea here. Albeit when you start to think about, you know, how this game was produced and, you know, th things like that, it gets a little bit silly. But the idea here of uh, ultimately, it's essentially like reading a cursed book, but this time you're kind of playing a, a cursed video game. I actually did quite like the idea here. And one thing this movie does have is a good excuse to have CGI kind of like beasties because these things are meant to be from the video game. So when we have these kind of entities that attack our kind of cast, they, you can't really co complain too much about, oh, they look kind of CGI, because they're meant to, because they're meant to be direct avatars from the game in certain sequences that are kind of interacting with our kind of characters in kind of real life. So it, it has an inbuilt reason for some of the effects here to look a little bit kind of CGI, you can kind of get away with it. But I've got to be honest with you, you know, I do think the CGI certainly for 2006 was, was all that bad, even in actual fact. And we see sequences within the game that kind of looks like a kind of a cutscene from, you know, a, a video game. A lot of it apparently was based on uh, House of the Dead uh, by Sega. Um, but yeah, I actually do think yeah, so there's some reasonably kind of creepy imagery here. Then we have this Elizabeth Bathory character who was obviously originally in Hungary, uh, but now now she's American. 
Um, and uh, yeah, the, I think the, the imagery of her is actually kind of quite good. And we towards the end of the movie, we go to more kind of physical sets where we see this kind of like gothic kind of style castle. And I've got to say, I quite enjoyed the kind of like the, the, the set design and kind of the, the kind of the, um, the spookiness there. Um, it actually has a cast of, of somewhat recognisable faces. Um, Milo Ventimiglia is in here. You've got Frankie Muniz, a couple of other kind of people that you'll kind of recognise. I think our main two kind of leads are a little bland, if I'm completely honest, but there you go. There's art, there is some kind of recognisable sort of character actors here. And the movie runs at a kind of a fair old pace to, to give it credit. But what can we say that doesn't work? Okay, you know, obviously if we're talking about the standard theatrical version, it is a very, very toothless movie. Now I will kind of like asterisk this by saying, I don't think it's necessarily unfair to have kind of like horror style movies that are aimed at an, a, a, a younger audience. Because ultimately this is a lot of the times how young people get into horror. So as itself, I can't really say I, I you know, if that's, the aim, if that's the market that it's aiming for, should that really be a critique? But you know, there it is. But in case you are wanting a more of a, a graphic, a more a bloody version, then seek out the kind of the director's cuts. Uh, but the uh, the standard version, as I say, is relatively get a little bit of kind of blood, a little a little bit of kind of like death. So some of them are kind of off screen and things like this, or at distance. So it is a little bit toothless. But you know, I, I can't necessarily say that that's a proper criticism in itself because I think you know, is this movie aimed at younger people? Then, then fair enough. Uh, but let's kind of move on from that uh, i gotta say that obviously when you look at the kind of the plot here, it is super hokey it doesn't make a lick of sense despite i think this movie having a somewhat of a neat idea about having a possessed video game obviously the amount of people and work that it kind of takes to, to make a video game it doesn't really make sense that this this kind of undead kind of uh figure from history has managed to make this kind of video game yet alone going to get it distributed and things like this you know, it, 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 the, I think this, the, the mechanics of it weren't particularly thought out. They could have had some type of cult or something like that that would be responsible for maybe some of the kind of the, uh, you know, the legwork involved in this. As it stands at the moment, it doesn't really kind of make a lot of kind of sense. Neither does having Elizabeth Bathory as um, like an American citizen with this kind of like random kind of like gothic kind of tower poking out uh, of this kind of area. Again, you would have thought these things would have been picked up uh, by people in the area and stuff like that, but whatever. You know, our cast of characters, I have to say, are a bunch of kind of cliches. As I've mentioned, it does have a couple of recognizable uh, faces in here, but everyone's acting very much like your cliche kind of written teen angsty kind of like 90 stereotypes even though this movie is a 2006 as i say it has that feel of the post scream era where we got all the kind of the movies like kind of like urban legend and i know we did last summer all that kind of thing it feels like it would fit right in those kind of um a stable of movies albeit this one came out a little later but the characters are bland uninteresting we don't really get uh any type of uh, real depth to them and we have these kind of forced in like uh uh, backstories like our main guy is afraid of fire so of course he has to kind of have a situation at the end where he's forced to confront fire and things like that it's like oh wow that was convenient wasn't it that was that just happened to be a bit of a coincidence things like this um, you know people have these reasons to kind of even though they they know that there's a curse on them they still find reasons to go off on their own and kind of end up getting kind of picked off things like that and yeah, you know, ultimately it does feel sort of a, a little bit vanilla and kind of watered down and the, the idea here is somewhat squandered. I still think this movie is somewhat watchable, especially I think if you want to kind of introduce a younger person into a kind of a horror movie that isn't going to be too offensive, but also kind of tying with probably their, certainly these days, their love of video games. Uh, I still think there's, there's possibly some market for that. So I, I don't think this, this movie is a, especially a particular car wreck, as some people would say it is. But I don't think it's a, uh, a good film. I don't think it's an average film. I think it is a slightly below average film. Albeit, I do think it has some, uh, uh, you know, watchability for certain audiences. And the director's cut, as I said, if you do want to, if this film does sound like it, it's something you want to watch. Maybe to check out that version instead. But we are talking the theatrical version, of which I am going to give a 4 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.